It was Earth Day yesterday. We're going to bring on Lisa Evans with Earth Justice to tell us if now, yesterday, on Earth Day, we solved it, the Earth is now protected and taken care of. Lisa Evans, thanks for joining us. And are we in the clear? Everything fixed? <laughs> well, not with Pruitt at the head of the um, agency, that's for sure. But we were close. We, we were close. <laughs> not at all. Okay. You want to talk about coal ash. What do we need to sure. know? Sure. Well, I've been, I've been at this uh, many years, so I have a little perspective and, and even started my um, career at the EPA. And uh, things have certainly changed. Um, but I'd, I'd like to talk about coal ash because we are um, coming up to tomorrow. There's a, a public hearing in D.C. on a new proposed rule by uh, the Pruitt EPA, and it is certainly um, something that people should know about. And let me give an introduction. I think a lot of people don't know uh, what coal ash is and the danger it poses to, um, to American communities. But coal ash is the waste that's left over after coal is burned uh, at electric power plants. And it's one of the largest toxic industrial waste streams in the country. Um, there are 110 million tons of coal ash generated every year, um, enough to fill a train uh, from uh, going from the North Pole to the South Pole uh, every year. And this waste has never, uh, it, it had never been regulated properly, um, and so it was dumped in unlined uh, impoundments in ponds and in landfills all across the country. Um, in 2015, uh, the Obama administration finalized the first ever federal regulations on coal ash, requiring it to be disposed of in secure landfills, uh, requiring spills to be cleaned up, requiring groundwater monitoring so that it didn't contaminate our drinking water. And that is the rule, the, 250, the 2015 rule, that's in great jeopardy right now uh, because industry wants it uh, rolled back and Pruitt has followed suit uh, to propose a radical rollback. So, talking to Lisa Evans, I'm Jefferson Smith. You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. When I was a delegate to the National Convention, and, that, uh, and I think that time it was 2004, uh, I was given a goodie bag, as were presumably all the delegates, or at least a lot of the delegates. And in my goodie bag was a stress reducer squishy hand thing that was a piece of clean coal. And it was a marketing tool to tell me all about clean coal. Now, if we had clean coal, does that get rid of the potash, excuse me, the coal ash? Does it reduce the coal ash to some degree, or is it merely a chimera? Is it just a medium-sized lie? No, no. That's, it's, a, it, it's, it's a lie bigger than your head. So the reason why I clean coal again. does not solve the coal ash problem is that what clean coal means is that you are scrubbing the gases that go out of the chimney out of the stack from a coal plant, and you're taking out more of the toxic chemicals. Uh. Well, those toxic chemicals have to go somewhere, and they go into the coal ash. So the, quote, cleaner the coal becomes, the more the, more the coal toxic. ash. Exactly. Oh, I didn't. Now I understand. That is very helpful. What, do you, what are your biggest hopes or biggest fears on this, given where we are, given Scott Pruitt at the EPA, given the comp current composition of Congress? Our biggest fears in the public interest community is that Scott Pruitt will reduce the coal ash rule to nearly nothing. So we've, we got these hard-won protections in 2015. And now what Pruitt wants to do is to give discretion to industry to regulate itself, to decide what is the proper amount of chemicals that can be leaked from their coal ash dumps into groundwater to get rid of the federal standards that say you can't contaminate it above background and to have industry itself decide how clean the groundwater should be around the sites which of course flows to private wells and becomes people's drinking water they want it's the rule the proposed rule uh, suggests that industry may be able to um, decide if cleanups are necessary so that if the um, utilities have contaminated groundwater, they may have the authority not to clean up the groundwater if they decide it's not necessary. And, and, so, Lisa, and Lisa, let me ask, I didn't mean to cut you off if you hadn't finished your point. Uh, the, the topic we were talking about is in a sea of dishonesty, in which are the pieces upon which we should latch on to 
uh, most vociferously? Which are the big lies that we should care the most about? As a public interest advocate, as somebody who's been working on coal ash, for instance, what's the big lie that you think that media hasn't been unearthing, hasn't been addressing sufficiently? I, I think it's that this EPA wants to get rid of the... We lost her. Are you there? All right, we're going to go, we're going to go, we lost her. We're going to go to Mike. We're going to go to Chris. Chris, you with us with Free Speech TV? I, I am. I listen to Free Speech TV. I was listening at 1350 AM. Um, the big lie is the American dream, uh, especially if you're a, a person of uh, ethnicity, a descent, or, uh, my, or, uh, or race. Um, and, you know, the big thing, and it's perpetuated by the conservative right, uh, and it's not going to not going to get any better until, um, you know, the corporation tax rate is increased. Uh, so that's, it, it's just difficult to, to, you know, you know, reach goals when there's, there's no way, there's no real way of even, uh, you know, accomplishing those, those goals. Uh, like for myself, I, you know, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm working towards a master's in uh, social work, but I've got like 72 grand of you know, student loans strapped to my back. Um, my wife and I, we own a home. However, you know, we had to, um, we had to refinance in order to pay off credit card debt. And that's, and I mean, and that's the case with, uh, with, with millions of Americans. Do you think um, that, so, do you think that the American dream was a lie made up by Hollywood that was never true? Or do you think that since essentially the Reagan era, uh, we have just no long. We are just no longer seeing a context where uh, the next generation is in a position to do better than the previous generation. This always, always was thus, or it's become a lie. No, I, I think it was a it was it was a realistic dream at one point. Like I think about like my brother that lives in Los Angeles. Um, you know, if you if you, I mean Los Angeles isn't isn't what you know what it once was at one point with blue skies. Uh, and, and that's another lie there too, right? With you know, you know, man not having an impact on on um, you know climate, you know climate change. We definitely have an you know an impact on climate change. But to answer your question, I mean, I think it was a reality at one point. When you have fair corporate taxes, like if you go all the way back to, you know, the FDR administration, when you know he. He, he knew. Yeah. He knew no, that, no, he that, that, that there was a chance, although although uh, I, I'm hearkening back to our caller, Marsha, who's pointed out that even in the time of the strongest middle class and the greatest degree of wealth equality in this country, it was not equally felt along uh, race, sex, and gender lines. Uh, we've got Lisa Evans back. Thanks a lot for calling, Chris. I'm going to get back to Lisa. Lisa, are you with us? I am. What I I've decided to do from now on, we have guests, is just as they're talking about what their big lie is, I'm going to cut out. And then, and then people just wait with rapt attention for you to finish your brilliant thought. Now you have a chance to finish your brilliant thought. Oh, well, I, I thought it was Scott Pruitt from his phone booth. It, might, it may have been. It may have, he may have been flying by with his chemtrail, and a chemtrail may have landed upon your comment. <laughs> okay, so I can, I, I can be succinct with the, the, biggest, the biggest lie is that uh, the biggest lie is that federal standards are not necessary. Because um, what Scott Pruitt wants to do is give discretion. Leave to the it states to the states. And give it or give it to industry and they can police themselves. But you need those federal health protective standards. Thank you, Lisa. You're listening to the Tom Hartman program. I'm Jefferson Smith filling in.